My First Bible presents The Ark of the Covenant in Philistine Land. When the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant, it was taken to Ashdod, one of its main cities, and they placed it in the temple next to the statue of their god, Dagon. They presented the Ark as an offering to Dagon. The next day, when the people of Ashdod went to the temple, they saw that the statue of Dagon was lying on the ground, face down, as if it were prostrate in front of the Ark of the Lord. Shocked, they lifted the statue and put it in its place. But the following day, they found the statue again lying on the ground, face down, but this time with his head and hands separated from its body. This caused great concern among the residents of Ashdod, and they did not want the Ark to remain any longer in their land. Then, the Lord punished the people of Ashdod, and they began to suffer from a plague of tumors and rats. People told each other, The Ark of the God of Israel cannot remain here because that god has unloaded his hand on us and against our god Dagon. So all the Philistine rulers gathered together to decide what to do with the Ark. What will we do with the Ark of the God of Israel? Take it to the city of Gath, the bosses answered. And so they did it. By bringing the Ark there, Jehovah also punished that city afflicting its residents with a plague of tumors and rats. This caused panic among them. Then they sent the Ark to Ekron, but as soon as the Ark was in the city, its residents began to shout. They have brought the Ark of the God of Israel to us to kill us all! And they too were filled with infestations of tumors and rats. Therefore, they summoned all the Philistine leaders and protested. Hey, wait a minute. Why do they always put the same characters? That was not... Carry on, carry on. Take that Ark away! Give it back to the Israelites so it doesn't kill us all! Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Then, the Philistine leaders called together the priests and the soothsayers and asked them, What will we do with the Ark? How will we get rid of it? How could we put it back where it belongs? We must understand that the same thing is happening to us as to the Egyptians, mm. that while they did not let the people leave, they were filled with plagues. If you plan to return it, do not just send it like that. You will have to present a guilt sacrifice to God. Only in that way will we regain health. And what should we offer as a guilt sacrifice? The Philistines asked. The way to do it will be this. You will make five golden figures in the shape of tumors and another five in the shape of rats, one for each Philistine chief and city, according to the number of your rulers and the plagues that have struck you. You will also order the construction of a completely new cart. Then they will choose two cows who are raising their calves and who have never carried a cart. You will tie both cows to the cart, but you will lock your calves in a stall. You will ride the ark on the cart along with a box that will contain the golden figures that will be given as a guilt sacrifice to God. Then you will observe the cows. If they stay here and not go anywhere because we have their calves, we will know that everything that is happening here is just coincidence. But if the cows begin to walk toward the land of the Israelites without detour, then we will know that the God of Israel is the one who has caused us this terrible calamity for having had his ark. And so they did it. 
They took the two cows and tied them to the cart, but they locked the calves into the stall. Besides, they placed the Ark of the Covenant and the box with the figures of rats and tumors in the cart. The cows, instead of going to where its calves were, began to move and walk directly toward the land of the Israelites without straying at any time. The Ark of the Covenant was in Philistine land for seven months. The leaders of the Philistines followed the cart to see if it would really reach the land of the Israelites. And that's how it happened. The Ark arrived at an Israelite city called Beth Shemesh. When the residents of Beth Shemesh looked up and saw the Ark, they were filled with joy. They sent for Levites to take the Ark. The cows stopped in a field at Beth Shemesh, where there was a huge stone. The Levites took the Ark of the Covenant and placed it on the stone, along with the box containing the gold figures. The townspeople used the wood from the cart as firewood and offered the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. The Philistine leaders saw all of this and returned to Ekron that same day. The residents of Beth Shemesh were happy to have the Ark of the Covenant, but some men had a bad idea. They dared to look into the Ark, and God killed them instantly. There was a great death toll, and many people died. Because of this, they sent for the people of Kiriath Jerim to take the Ark. And they brought it to the house of a man called Abinadab, which was on a hill. Then they anointed his son, Eliezer, to be in charge of the Ark. The Ark stayed there for about 20 years. Samuel was the judge and prophet of all Israel. All the people of Israel eagerly sought Jehovah. For that reason, Samuel said, If you really want to serve the Lord with all your heart, get rid of foreign gods, and devote yourselves totally to serving Jehovah alone, and he will free you from the power of the Philistines. So, the Israelites threw out idols of Baal and the foreign images. And they served the Lord. Samuel ordered all the people of Israel to gather at Mizpah to pray to the Lord for everyone. So they did it. All the Israelites were in Mizpah. When the Philistines found out about this, the rulers said, All the Israelites are gathered at Mizpah. This is the opportunity we've been waiting for. Now, Israel will fall into our hands. So, the Philistines marched out to attack the Israelites. When the Israelites realized that the Philistines were coming, they were afraid and said to Samuel, Please, Samuel, don't stop asking the Lord for us to save us from the Philistines. Then Samuel took a small lamb and offered it as a burnt offering to the Lord. Then he prayed to God on Israel's behalf, and God answered. As the Philistines moved forward to attack Israel, in the sky, clouds began to gather, and the Lord threw great thunder and lightning against the Philistines. This created confusion among them, and the Philistines were defeated by the Israelites. Then the Israelites chased the Philistines, killing them along the way. Thus, Israel recovered the lands that the Philistines had captured. 
afterwards, Samuel took a stone, and he placed it between the land of Mizpah and Sen, and called it Ebenezer. What does it mean? Jehovah has helped us up to this point. Throughout Samuel's life, God showed his power against the Philistines, keeping them under control and bringing peace to Israel. Samuel continued leading Israel, guiding the people and keeping them faithful to God. Subscribe, comment, leave us your like, and follow us on our social networks. Thanks! Hey! We will greet our friends who have commented on our post. If you want a greeting in the next video, follow us and comment on the latest posts on our networks, Instagram and YouTube. The next greetings go to... Jail from USA 2. Voice of Reason from South Africa. Oscar Rokori. Ayatayo, Feishola, and Olamide from England. Aisha Freeman. Donna George. Israel Joseph from Trinidad. Mabel Moa. Danielle and Esther. Rodney Goncalves. Brian Lockheath. Celeste Cadence and Joseph Lauro from Philippines. Hilda Biney. Sandy Marion. Phoebe E. Hiram from Mexico. Mikhail from South Africa. Lindo, Mimi, and Musa from South Africa. Ronald Gonzalez. Helen Nito. Kay Hatfield from USA. Alexis Smart. Hanu Priscilla. Nangolo from Namibia. Riley and Egypt from Florida. Lindsay Reyes. Naomi from Guyana. Chantel Mills from Alberta, Canada. Randy Welchel. Edward Gasseler. Rachel Solowu. Thank you very much for all your great support! support.